questions. So the, really the last thing is just kind of tied, tied to everything that we've been doing so far uh, with uh, making financial decisions and things you guys, you guys are going to see right after you graduate, possibly coming up. Do you guys know the difference between buying and leasing a car? I don't. Do you know anybody that leases a car? You know what leasing means? It's, like okay. it's kind of like renting a car. Um, it's not renting as a, like you're going to go to Hertz and rent a car for like two days or something like that, especially if you're like traveling. It's not the same as that. Leasing a car, you're actually, it's your car for a while. Um, the difference is like with buying a car, you're eventually going to own the car, right? You, you buy it, you pay it off. And when it's done paying it off, you're done making payments, which is ultimately what I think most of us want to do. I don't want to have a payment forever and ever. Actually, I have my cars like seven years old, six years, six or seven years old now. I was done paying it off after five years and it's so nice not to have a car payment. You definitely don't want to have a car payment forever and ever. Um, and then also the value of that car is included with your overall net worth. You know, you can sell that car and make, and get some money back on it if you wanted to, because it's your car. You can do whatever you want with it. If you want to drive it off a cliff, you know, see what happens with it. You can do that too. Don't be in the car though when you do that. Um, but if you're leasing a car, um, a lot of people why a lot of reasons why people want to lease is because they're lower payments than a traditional buying a car. But you always um, have to you're always going to end up having a payment. People who do leasing they do it because they want to get a new car every couple of years. Uh, but it's going to cost you if you want to have that luxury of getting a new car every couple of years. It's going to cost you. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize, but if you if you lease a car, most leases require that you only you can't exceed a certain number of miles each month or each year. And if you exceed that, then they charge you extra for like every mile that you go over or every 100 miles that you go over or something like that. Um, and then, of course, if you're always leasing, you're always going to have a payment. I have a friend who literally I don't think he's – since I've known him, the 15 years that I've known him, he always has a new car every couple of years because he leases them. And it's just like he's never going to not have a car payment because he wants to live that lifestyle. Yeah, but it's, it would suck to have to have a car payment of two, three, four hundred dollars $400 every single month and never stop that. That's just – that's a lot of money they could be using for something else. Um, so I just a real quick crash course on that stuff if, in case you didn't know about it. But let's talk about those buying a car and getting a loan in general. Um, do you know what a down payment is? What's a down payment? Money you put up front. Okay. When you buy a car, you're going to have to go to the bank and get a loan. Unless you guys are so uber rich and you're – have $30,000 in cash that you can just go buy that car with, which I still wouldn't recommend anyway. But most of us are going to need to get a loan. Um, and a down payment is uh, a, uh, some sort of payment that you make up front, basically for the bank to know that you're serious about that loan. Unless you have excellent, exceptional credit, the bank is going to require you to put money down because they don't know if you are going to pay your bills on time or pay your bills at all. Why would they give you a loan for $25,000 and you don't put anything up front and then you walk away with that car and then maybe you never even pay that? Okay. Down payment is going to make sure that you're serious about, hey, I'm putting a $5,000 down because I know that I'm going to be paying this car off. And that just kind of shows them that you're serious. Um, let's do some math here. Everybody grab a calculator and have in front of you. Um, let's do some really, really easy basic math though. I want you to see if you guys can calculate this really quick. Suppose a car costs $38,230. How much would your down payment be if the bank required? This is, I know this is the end of the year, dude, but come on. I'm going to force you to watch this later. How much would your down payment be if the bank required 5.8% of the cost as a down payment? Figure it out. See if you can figure that out. You guys should all know how to find a percentage of a number at this point in, in your life. See if you can figure this out. Car costs $38,230. How much would your down payment be if the bank required 5.8% of that cost? Do you know? You think you got it? I don't know why I'm saying it. Is it 580? Mm -hmm. No. No. <laughs> Way more than $580. We're all stumbling on something that we should know how to do from middle school. 
2,000 what? 217. 217. How'd you get that? Uh, times it by 0.05. That's correct. If you want to figure out a percentage of any number, we multiply it by the decimal version of that number. 38,230 times 0 0.058 will give me how much I had to put down. Everybody needs to know how to do this. Everybody needs to know how to find a percentage. You cannot graduate high school and not know how to find a percentage of a number. Uh, $2,217.34. If we're rounded to the nearest um, cent, usually in money, you're always going to round to two decimal places. Okay. Um, obviously, we don't have 38000 Most of us don't have $38,000 to put down on a car. Right here, grab a calculator, please. Um, but we do, we might be able to save up to, for this pretty easily. Banks are going to require down payments. How does, when you go to the bank and you get a loan, you're going to have like options, four-year loan, five-year loan, six-year loan. Now they even offer seven-year loans. It's ridiculous how long they offer that. But how does that affect you in the long run? Let's do some other basic math here for a second. Suppose you buy a car for $23,965. Okay, keep that number um, stashed away in your head. You have excellent credit, so the bank does not require a down payment. With a 3.5% interest rate, your payment works out to be $435.97 per month on a five-year loan. I've already calculated this for you using the TVM solver, the TVM part of the calculator. You don't need to do any extra work. What I want to ask you guys is this. How much interest do you end up spending for the entire life of the loan? Okay. So let's think about it for a second. How much are you paying every single month? Four thirty-five ninety-seven. And how much? How many times are you paying it? For how long? Sixty months. Sixty times you're paying it. How'd you get that, jo uh, Jojo? Twelve times five. Every month for a year for five years. Right, so twelve months out of the year for five years. Twelve times five. Multiply that out. Four thirty-five ninety-seven times twelve times five, or times sixty. Put that number in your calculator. Times five. Times twelve times five. Twenty-six thousand one hundred fifty-eight dollars and twenty cents. That what you got? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's how much you're paying overall for the car. Okay, that includes the interest because when I calculated this number right here, that included that 3.5% interest rate. So this number right here includes all the interest you're paying over the entire time that you've had this, that you bought this car. How do I figure out how much of that is just the interest though? You're overthinking it. Subtract what? Subtract the original price of the car. This is the price of the car that was there. This is how much you end up paying after you paid all the payments with the interest. If you just subtract the original price of the car, whatever is left over is how much you're paying in interest. Go ahead and subtract it on your calculator. Okay? Have that number in your calculator because I'm going to go on to another slide here in a second. Have that number in your calculator. Should have gotten $2,193.20, right? So you're paying $2,193 for interest over the course of 60 months, five years. Is that good or bad? It's actually not that bad. 3.5% is a pretty low interest rate. Uh, some of you might be able to find it a little bit lower. But for some of us, we can't, we can't avoid that because we have to get a loan. Otherwise, we can't even buy that car. And think about it. That $2,000 is spread out over 60 payments. So it's really not that that much every every single month when you break it down. But what happens if you were to, to do it for a less amount of time? That was a five-year loan. What, what happens if you decide to do it on a four-year loan instead? So I redid this calculation for you. I already calculated it. I redid it on four-year instead of a five-year. And now the payments went up a lot. Not a lot, but I made about 100 bucks. 535.76 it is per month. Let's figure out now how much you're going to be paying for interest. So figure out how much you're going to pay overall first. Take the 535.76 and multiply it by what? 
figure out how much you're going to pay overall. You're doing it for four years now instead of five. Hopefully you change that five to a four. So you're paying twenty five thousand seven sixteen forty eight over the course of just four years instead of five. Subtract the original price amount again. It's the same same car. You're just doing it in four years instead of five. Do you think it's going to be more interest or less interest? Put it in there. Why not? Why was it less interest? It's less time. You're paying it off sooner. Okay. So, but what happened to the payment when you paid it off sooner? Was the payment more or less when you paid it off in you know, four years instead of five? It was more. So here's where you're, you, you got to weigh your, your differences here. The longer you take to pay off a loan, the lower the payment's going to be every single month, but the more in interest you're going to end up paying in the long run. If you don't want to pay a lot in interest, pay it, pay it off in a less amount of time. But if you pay it off in less amount of time, you're going to have to pay more per month. It's going to be based on, hey, what can you afford? Ultimately, in the long run, if the interest rate is really, really low, it's, it's not going to be that much of a difference. But if their interest rate is a lot higher, you definitely want to pay off your loans, whether it be car, house, or whatever, in as fast as amount of time as possible. Even though it's going to be more per month, you're going to pay a lot less money in interest. And if you did your homework assignment, the last homework assignment, you saw the difference between Miranda and Leslie's cars, right? Are y'all there today, Miranda and Leslie? Did y'all see y'all's problems on there? Um, one of y'all had good credit, one of y'all had bad credit, and the good credit person had paid a lot less money per month than the person that didn't have as good credit and had a higher interest rate. Okay. So um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys again, crash course version of this, but, and this is probably not something you're going to be doing for a couple of years, but it's definitely something that you want to think about just maybe knowing how the process works is buying a house. Um, and when you're looking at buy, buying a house man, this is probably one of the biggest and best investments that you'll ever make in your entire life. Now, that's not to say that none of you are going to go out and play the stock market or invest in a company or a startup or Dogecoin or whatever that's going to make you rich. But houses can be a huge, huge investment. They're not just money pits like apartments. You go to an apartment, you're throwing money away because you're never going to own that apartment. You know who owns that apartment? Some some rich billionaire guy who's just going to make more and more rent every single time that they put a new renter in there. Okay, But in your house, you could buy a house and the value of the house continues to go up and up and up. We've talked about this. Your parents, ask your parents how much their value of their houses has gone up. I bet you they would tell you it's already a lot. Now, there's a word, there's a couple of terms I just want you guys to know before you, before you get out of here. And the first one is called equity. You buy your house for this amount right here and you now your value already skyrockets. You can buy a house out here in Kyle and within two years, it's already worth like 25 to 30% more than what you bought it for. Have you heard that before? You know, these values are going up so much. So the equity is how much the difference between how much your house is actually worth now minus how much you still owe on it. The great thing about equity is that when you make payments on your house every month, you're paying off whatever you bought it for, not what the price is right now. That works into all of our advantages. So you want to have build up a huge equity and equity has a lot of say in a lot of different things. If you have a lot of equity in your home, guess what? Banks think, know that you're going to be very reliable. It helps your credit score. It helps you get approved for other loans. You can actually pull out money out of that equity. It's called a home equity loan and use that to, let's say, I want to send Christian to college because he's going to go play baseball and he needs some uh he needs some help or um, Alyssa is going to get a new car to go whenever she drives gets to her new um, college. So I need to pull out some, some there, or I want to add a third bedroom or fourth bedroom to my house. We're going to do some major improvements. You can pull out loans on something that doesn't even exist yet, but it would exist if you were to sell your house because you could sell your house and you would have all that money sit in the bank. But unfortunately, if you wanted to buy another house, you have to buy another house in the same market, but you get the idea. 
Um, when you get, buy a house, lo, there's are you're also going to have to do a put a down payment. And traditional loans require 20% down payment. Think about this for a second. Uh, grab your calculator real quick. Put in, let's say, a, let's say a house, one of these houses back here I saw was $320,000. Put in $320,000 and multiply it times 0.2. How much would that down payment be? 0. 0.2. $64,000. It would take me a hell of a long time to raise 64000 or save $64,000, even with my fiance's income. That That's it's that's a lot of money for a, for a house, for the down payment just for the house. Luckily, there's other programs out there. I have this, I'm on this program right here called the FHA loan where they offer lower middle class, depending on how much money you make, you can qualify for one of these loans and you only have to put three and a half percent down. Take that same 320,000 and multiply it times 0 0.035. What's that? What'd you get? Wait, is it 0.35? No, 0.035. Oh. Yeah. What'd you get, Alyssa? Isn't that 11,000? 11, 11,000? Okay. 11,2 That's a lot easier to save up for, right? And if the house is less, obviously that's even less. Um, so these are options that are out there. Look for those options. So. And then most home loans are for 30 years. I bet you if you text your parents right now, hey, how long is our house is your house loan? They would say 30 years. Okay, you can get them in 20 years or 10 years or 15 years, but obviously the payment's gonna be a lot more because you're paying it off in a lot less time. And houses are a lot of money, let's be real. We have to have these loans in order to even do it. So I'm gonna give you a real quick crash course. I want you guys to uh, go ahead and reset your calculator, second plus sign seven one two. And um, you guys at home, I'm going to put in the uh, this TVM solver again. So you all um, pull this up so that we can do a, a real quick problem, a little pr practice problem. You're going to have to use the TVM solver on the test on Friday. So just be, be prepared for that. Here's a situation I want you guys to put into the TVM solver. Once you set up your calculator, go to that part. Remember, you press apps and then go to finance and then TVM solver. Y'all all remember how to get there? Yeah, here, you remember how to get there? All right, see if you can start filling in the information here. Suppose you wanna buy a house for $250,000. The bank approves you for a 30 year loan, 3.99% interest rate. You pay three and a half percent down, which is 8,750, which leaves you with $241,250 to pay off, okay? Um, what will your monthly payment be? And I'll talk about this principal and interest in a second. Figure out what your payment's going to be. This is your present value, the 241 to 250, because I'm already paying the 8750 up front. So just put the 241 to 250 in the PV part. See, I'm going to give you about 30 or so seconds to see if you can figure out what to put in the other variables. And you guys at home use this right here to see if you can figure out the uh, what to fill in. I'm gonna give you about 45 seconds, one minute. What's your end going to be? Not just 30. 30 times 12. Remember, it's total payments or total compounding periods. 
So it's 30 years, but there's 12 a year. So you got to put 30 times 12 or automatically put in 360. If you put 30 times 12, remember it changes it for you. Okay, so don't forget that. I is easy. That's always the easiest one. Just copy it down. Uh, I already told you what PV was, 241250. Got that so far? Okay. We don't know what payment is. That's what we're looking for. So leave payment blank or a zero for now. And when we're paying off a loan, what do we want future value to be? Zero. Okay, so put in zero. Both PY and CY are both going to be what? 12, because you're doing it 12 times a year. So put in all that information, go back up to payment and figure out what payment's going to be if you haven't done it already. Does everybody know how to do that? Mm -hmm. On this, because Friday, you're not going to have, you guys are not going to have this. You meant on this, you would just press solve for PMT right there. Okay. You are going to have to yeah, use this. Highlight, highlight, highlight the PMT. What? Let's highlight PMT. Okay. Alpha. Thank you. And on this one, you would just fill it out, and then whatever one you're looking for, you just press solve for that. Okay. okay. Um, and so you should have gotten eleven fifty and thirty seven cents. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Now, this is almost what you're paying, but think what this is. What this is is that this is just your payment for the house, for the principal and interest just on your house. There's something else that we have to pay for when we buy a house that's not just this amount. So it's actually more than this that you have to pay every single month. Do you know what else you have to pay on your house besides bills? What else do you have to pay on your house when you own a home and own a piece of property? Anybody know? Every month or every year, you have to pay the county property taxes. You ever heard of this? Okay. The county has owns pretty much every part of these, uh, all these lands and all these parcels and all these properties. You got to pay taxes on that. And what that's called um, is that it's called an escrow account. You actually have to pay it every single year. But when you get a, when you get a loan from the bank for a house, they actually start, they estimate, they basically, what they do is they estimate how much your property taxes are going to be for the coming year. The more your house is worth, the more your property taxes go up. Okay, it's always based on the value of the house that year. So um, they estimate what it's going to be. They break it up in 12 easy payments for you, and they just tack it onto your, your regular mortgage payment every single month. Now, alternatively, if you wanted to, you could pay that, that amount by yourself. You could save it off to the side, and then at the uh, January of every year, you would go to the tax assessor's office and you would pay that off. I'm sure you've all driven by the tax assessor's office, the one for Hayes County, or one of them is right there on the corner by the by 35 in the old bus barn. You know that little building that's right there on the corner as you round out? It says Hayes County Tax Assessor. That's one of their offices right there. That's literally where you would go to pay off the stuff. Now, most of, our, most of us, when we own a house, the bank does it for us. So they put the money, they take a little bit of your payment every single month, they put it into an account called escrow, and at the end of the month, they take that escrow account and they pay the county for the taxes that you owe for that property. Now, if they overpay, guess what happens on uh, in January of that year? Send you a check for how much the overpayment was. It's nice to get those little overpayments. If they underpay, which is not very good, and that's happens sometimes, is then they start charging you extra the following year to, to catch up on their payments. Okay. But it's pretty easy the way they do it because they just do it in 12 equal payments. So when I show you this part right here, say, suppose your property taxes are about $4,560 each year. What would your escrow payment be? What would your monthly escrow payment be? What would I do with that number? If this is the amount per year, how much do I figure out per month? Just divide it by 12. Okay. Divide that by 12 in your calculator. So you get about $380 a month. Okay. 
So they're going to tack on, the bank is going to tack on an extra $380 onto your payment to that $1,150 that we just came up with to be put into the escrow account to pay your taxes at the end of the year. All your taxes get paid at the end of the year, every single year, usually sometimes at some, at some point in January. And then the county sends you a receipt in the mail saying you've paid your taxes, basically, is what it is. Now, if you're actually all collectively, this is what we call our mortgage payment. I know you've heard that term, right? Parents pay a mortgage. If, you're, if your parents own their house, they pay a mortgage. The mortgage collectively is just the principal and interest plus the escrow payment. So if you wanted to figure out how much money you would uh, pay overall for that house, get an estimate, um, there's a, that's what you would do. You would just add those two together, the original principal and interest payment plus the escrow payment. Now, this changes every year. What, what would make this change every year? Not up by a lot, but it, it fluctuates. What, it, what makes it fluctuate? The market. the market, right? This this might not fluctuate, okay, unless you're on a not on a fixed interest rate. If you want to get an interest rate, you want to be on a fixed interest rate. You don't want to be on a variable one because that could go up or down. This is going to change because of the market and how much your house is worth. If your house value continues to go up, up, and up, this number is going to go up and up and up. Okay, But if, your house, if the value of your house stays the same or maybe even goes down a little bit, this number could either stay the same or go down. So this will, this will vary every year based on that information. But this would be a, a pretty just generic example, easy example of how to do that. Okay. Um, if you go into your assignment, the assignment this time is super easy. Well, at least I think it's super easy. Um, it's a, I need to unlock it here actually. If you go into 8.5, it is a assignment right here. You do it completely in Schoology and all you really need is a calculator. You should be able to do everything directly from um, the calculator without even writing anything down. 